kaman dalhin ang kapalaran Iisumbayan lang sa puso mo'y naman Inagmulan at babalikan Konting tiis na lang at hang Magandang hapon UK, magandang hapon Europe at magandang gabi po sa Pilipinas. Ako po si Rose Eclarinal at ngayong hapon makakasama ko po si Jean Alcantara at Crystal Diaz. Ito po ang Facebook Live ng One You Connect. Katulad po ng nasabi namin sa inyo last week, habang hindi po kami nakakapag-produce ng content para sa One You Connect, para sa programang ito, dahil nga po sa lockdown dito sa UK at sa Europa, ay mag-Facebook Live po kami para po sa aming public service, community service sa inyo habang nasa lockdown po tayo. Um, unang bahagi po natin ay kumustahan COVID-19 lockdown. At sa pangalawang bahagi naman, Uh, stay tuned dahil napaka-importante po sasagutin ni Jean Alcantara at ni Crystal Diaz ang maiinit na tanong tungkol sa immigration. Last week naman, ibinahagi po namin sa inyo yung mga storya namin tungkol sa lockdown, tungkol sa COVID-19. So bago po tayo magsimula, bati muna ang ating mga kasama Jean and Crystal. Okay, uh, magandang hapon, magandang uh, umaga sa mga taga-US at magandang gabi sa mga taga-Pilipinas. Uh, ako po si Jean Alcantara, Immigration Consultant sa London. Kaya kung meron po kayong katanungan, pakisulat na lang po ninyo para mabasa namin dito sa mga comments. At pipilitin po namin masagot agad. Hello, I'm Crystal Diaz. Good afternoon, Jean. Good afternoon, Rose. Good afternoon to all of our listeners, Tito po sa One EU Connect. Happy Bank Holiday. Um, last Friday, we celebrated the victory in Europe and uh, everyone is enjoying the weather. So hopefully we'll have a good show today. So um, just stay tuned. And Crystal, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you and Jean, to your wife, and of course, to my mom in the Philippines. Happy Mother's Day. Um, magkaiba yung celebration ng Mother's Day dito sa UK at saka sa Pilipinas, ano? But um, we're making sure na sana ay nanunood ang mami ko. I'm sure um, later uh, mag-comment yan. Uh, happy Mother's Day to you. Ang mga nanay po sa inyong lahat na nanunood ngayon. So, last week nga, nagkumustahang COVID-19 tayo, kumustahang lockdown. This week naman ay magbabahagit sa atin ang kanyang karanasan sa pagkakaroon ng karamdaman, hindi po taga UK, sa Sweden naman siya. So, we're lucky to have our guest today, Vanji Rebot Horkia, para po magbahagi naman sa atin ng kanyang mga karanasan or bakit ba natin ginagawa ito? Because nga gusto natin syempre ma-inform yung mga kababayan natin ano ba yung mga pwede nilang gawin pa kung nagkaroon kayo ng sintomas. Vanji, good afternoon dyan sa Sweden. Kumusta ka? Mabuti naman. Magandang hapon din sa inyong lahat at magandang gabi sa Pilipinas. Okay. Ba, uh, si Vanji po ay hindi na bago sa One New Connect. Noong 2015 ay na-feature natin ang uh, storya ng kanyang pamilya, lalong-lalo na uh, nakafocus ito sa kanyang anak na si RJ dahil uh, bit, um, gumawa tayo ng dokumentaryo tungkol sa naging karamdaman ni RJ at paano nila ito nilabanan bilang pamilya. Si Vanji ay uh, stringer din, correspondent ng TFC News. At talagang aktibo sa Filipino community dyan sa Sweden. Siya po ang nangangalap ng balita para sa mga kababayan natin. At uh, meron din siyang um, mga charitable organizations na tinutulungan. So Vanji, uh, nagpa-flash dyan sa screen natin. Ito yung mga sa Pilipinas. Ano, I'm sure they want to know kung kumusta ka na. 
Ah, uh, okay, okay na ako ngayon mo. Galing na, mabuti na. Okay. Can you tell us kung ano yung mga sintomas na naramdaman mo uh, nung nagkasakit ka at bakit mo naisip na maaring COVID-19 ito? Kasi alam natin sa Sweden, iba rin ang estilo ng, uh, ng gobyerno para dito sa pagsagot or to address the problem at pag-atake sa pandemic. So tell us, ano yung, ano yung uh, naranasan mo at uh, lilinawin natin hindi kayo na test ng COVID-19, ano? Go ahead, Panji. Yeah, okay. Uh, Nag-start lang yun sa ubo, ganyan, and then namamalat ang aking boses. And pangkaraniwan naman ang nangyayari kasi sa akin ang, ano, ang ganun kapag uh, ganitong panahon, ano, kasi marami akong allergy, ang pollen, ganun. So, hindi ako masyadong, ano, hindi ako masyadong worried. Hanggang nung nasa trabaho ako, uh, narinig ako nilang umubo. Alam mo naman dito sa Sweden, kapag ka na, parang bawal ang umubo nung nagkaroon na ng COVID, ano. Mm-hmm. Sabi ko, naku, hindi pa pwedeng magtrabaho kasi, ano ka, inuubo ka. Mm-hmm. So, umuwi ako. Ang, ano ko lang, parang normal lang. Kasi, usually naman, pagka ganito ang panahon, lagi akong namamalat, nawawala ng bosses, ganun. Mm-hmm. And then, after two days, Ah, uh, naramdaman ko parang nanghihina na ako, hindi nagkaroon na ako ng lagnat. Mm-hmm. And then after that, ah, uh, nagkaroon na ako ng diary- diarrhea. And then sabi ko, parang iba ngayon, sabi ko ganoon, parang medyo mm-hmm. natakot na ako. Hindi nang tumataas na nang tumataas yung lagnat ko. Tumawag na ako sa ano sa doktor uh, by video na ano kasi hindi ka nang pwedeng pumunta sa mm-hmm. sa board central dito. Mm-hmm. And then ang sabi nila, just stay home ganon. So ang ginawa ko na lang, gumawa na lang ako ng mga precautions sa bahay para iisipin mo kasi bilang isang ina, proteksyonan yung mga anak mo, baka mamaya, COVID nga yun. Uh-huh. Ganon din. Tumataas ang after the two. Uh-huh. Tumataas yung lagnat ko, pero bumababa rin naman siya. Pero uh-huh. ang pinakamatindi ay ang sakit ng ulo. Dito siya, hanggang dito sa baba, na yung feeling mo ba na para kang mataas yung blood pressure mo. Pero pag mm-hmm. nag-blood pressure naman ako, normal lang siya. Super mm-hmm. sakit. Tapos, uh, normal din lang yung ano ko. Hanggang sa nakareceive ako ng tawag after one week, ano, normal lang yung buhay ko. Nag-i-stay ako sa room, ganun. Hinahanda ko yung sarili ko. And then, after that, sabi ko ganun, uh, ano lang to, kayang-kaya to. Sabi ko, nagbibiro pa nga ako. Sabi ko, I have nine lives. Sabi ko, so I still have six. <laughs> ganun pa. And then, normal lang, parang ano, hanggang sa nakaritib ako ng tawag mula sa boss ko na mm-hmm. yung nag ako ng two nights, may positive doon sa department na pinagtrabahoan ko, doon nag-start na akong na-paranoid. So, yun ang, palagay ko ang gumupo sa katawan ko, yung bang feeling na, naku, may COVID ako, baka mamatay ako, yung bang hindi ka ready na mamatay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yun ang experience ko. Okay. So I'm glad you're well now, Vanji. May tanong ba kayo sa kanila, um, kay Vanji, Jean, and Crystal? Yes, um, uh, Vanji, I'm sorry you went through that, no? But uh, interesado lang akong malaman. So nung, nung uh, dinadanas mo ba yan, uh, may, may katulong ka ba na, I know, gumagawa ng shopping mo, etc. Sino tumulong sa'yo? Meron ba sa community? Uh, wala naman kasi ang ang nangyari kasi no, nung nung nagkaroon na nga ako ng sakit ang anak ko na lang na si RJ bali tatlo kasi yung kasama ko sa bahay sabi sa akin ni RJ kailangan isa lang yung tumulong sa akin para if ever so nasa room lang ako so sa room ako kumakain lumalabas lang ako pag mag-CCR ganon and then pag wala yung mga bata pagkain ng katawan ko nagluluto na ako ng marami tapos mm-hmm. inilalagay ko na siya sa lunch box at inilalagay ko na siya sa freezer Mm-hmm. Para hindi na ba ako iintindihin ng aking mga anak, hindi na nila ako aasikasuhin, gano'n. Pero three days talaga akong hindi makabangon. Mm. So ilang linggo kang may lagnat, Vanji? Uh, siguro ang lagnat ko lang mga five days lang. So, after mo nilagnat, uh, mas mahina-mahina ang pakiramdam mo? Humina yung katawan ko at saka hindi ako makakain na ang ano ko kasi nung nung kumakain ako lagay, nilalagyan ko ng maraming asin at saka ano yung paminta kasi wala siyang lasa. So napansin ko sabi ko nakot baka nga covid na to pero ang ang nasa isip ko kasi whatever it is ang nasa isip ko yung makasurvive. survive so pinipilit kong kumain 
pinipilit mo talagang kumain, nagluto ako ng maraming aros kaldo, ganun. Mm-hmm. Tapos, kahit hindi, sabi ko, kahit napakahirap ano, lunukin, talagang kinakain ko kasi otherwise, um, mamamayat ako ng husto. Pero, si, siyempre, pagkakataon na, kasi nagdadahit. <laughs> Oo. Okay. See, see, just like Vanjie, you know, Rose and I, we had the same symptoms. Um, we had uh, high fever. Ako din po, I had experienced the same. I had the chills, uh, headache as well, and diarrhea. What about, did you get, um, like, yung coughing, nag-cough din kayo, yung uh, feeling of breathlessness, did you experience that as well? Yeah, ano yung, nagkaroon din ako ng ubo, pero hindi siya yung sunod-sunod. Ang nahirapan mm-hmm. ako yung sa paghinga. Mm-hmm. Gumagamit ako ng inhaler. Mm-hmm. Gumagamit ako ng inhaler para lang, kapag ka nahihirapan akong huminga, lalo na sa gabi, hindi ako makatulog, ganun, mm-hmm. uh, wala kang posisyon pa na, uh, ano, no. mahirap yung posisyon. Pag naka, natutulog ka, yung likod mo masakit. Kaya ang ginagawa ko, yes. nag-alarm clock ko, at nag-change ako ng posisyon para makatulog. Yes, yeah, you, you did experience backache as well. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the same. I, I had that. Okay. So, Uh, can I just ask you, uh, Panji, uh, kasi nabanggit mo kanina, no? parang ayaw mo pang mamatay. I mean, uh, we don't want that on anybody. No? Yeah. Of But, course. Uh, question, question ko lang, uh, kung sakaling may nangyari, nakahanda ba naman yung pamilya mo? I mean, may, may insurance ka bang matatanggap? Yeah, medyo personal, no? But uh, 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 nakahanda yeah, ka ba sa mangyayari? Yeah, of course. Kasi nung makatanggap ako ng tawag, ano, always ready naman ako, ano, uh, kahit ako yung nagbabiyahe lang, nag-aano nag, ako ng additional insurance. At saka meron akong life insurance mm-hmm. na binabayaran ko para sigurado para sa aking mga anak, ano, ganun. At saka syempre may benefit ka rin matatanggap mula sa gobyerno. At saka syempre yung trabaho mo, matagal din naman ako nagtrabaho dito. At yung paghahanda na sinabi ko na sinasabi mo talagang pinaghandaan ko yung gene. Alam mo bang ginawa ko pati last will and testament ginawa ko na. Wow. Kasi talagang na paranoid na talaga ako. Para bang sabi ko oh my god, sabi ko ayun ko pang mamatay. Parang this is the first time na madalas naman ako na ospital ano hindi naman lingit sa kalaman ng lahat na ako ay labas-masok ng ospital. Pero never kung naramdaman yung ganung takot. Yung bang, yung bang takot na takot kang mamatay kasi nga COVID nga eh, wala pang ang gamot eh. Unlike okay. pag nagkakansel ka, may gamot, mm-hmm. alam mo magtatagal ka pa ng konti, ganon. Oo, ito hindi mo alam. Vanji, um, may tanong dito, did you have a swab test? At kung nagkaroon? No. Okay, so can you please explain to us bakit hindi? Kasi dito sa UK, um, ito ang tanong ni Vilma Masilungan, did she have a swab test? Bakit hindi kayo nagkaroon ng swab test kahit report ninyo yung sintomas na yan na uh, kung titingnan mo nga ay talagang sintomas ng COVID, ano? pero wala nga lang testing. Go ahead, Vanjie. Kasi dito kasi sa ano sa Sweden, kapag ka may sintomas ka, mag ka lang sa bahay. And then, ang mangyayari sa iyo diyan, maghihintay ka lang na talagang hindi ka na makahinga and then pupunta ka na ng ano ng hospital. Hindi kasi dito nagti-test no mga panahong 'yon, pero ngayon nagti-test na sila, no? Uh, unlike before, na sinisave kasi nila 'yon. At kaya maraming ano, maraming Marami talagang hindi na test na mga nagka-COVID dito. Siyempre ako, hindi nga ako na test pero marami kasi ang talagang sinabi sa akin ng doktor na nakausap ko na you stay home, don't go out kahit mag-take a walk. Ganon, parang inano na nila na may COVID ako kaya at pinuntahan din kasi ako ng ambulansya. Mm, okay. And And ay nag si Banji. Um, yung nakita po ninyo kanina na video na nagpi-play, ito yung documentary namin kay Banji at sa anak niya na si RJ noong 2005, uh, yung ang storya po namin yung ADM boy, ADM boy. Survivor talaga ito si Banji dahil nag-aalaga ng anak pero kahit nag-aalaga, nagtatrabaho, ay meron pa rin siyang panahon para mag-community uh, work, para magsabisyo sa ating mga kababayan dyan sa Sweden. Um, kaka, magandang ikumpara 
yung sitwasyon sa Sweden at sa UK, Gina, no? Kasi dito rin sa UK, um, hindi ka rin isa swab test nung parahon ng Marso kung hindi ka talaga pumasok sa ospital bilang pasyente. Isn't that correct, uh, Crystal? Correct, yes. You have to be admitted um, to the hospital before they can do anything to give you the test. I was never tested because I didn't go to the hospital. Um, I was just checked out by um, the paramedics. They said I may have suspected COVID-19, but that was it, you know. I just had to stay at home and, you know, um, self-isolate for 14 days, but no testing at all. Oo. So okay. yung sa tanong, yes, go ahead. Sabi nung isang kaibigan natin, no, kung talagang matindi na yung nararamdaman mo, kailangan tatawag ka talaga ng ambulansya at sabihin mo sa kanila, dramahan mo na, na serious na serious ka. Uh-huh. Kasi kung sabihin mo lang na may ubo ka, may sakit ng ulo, whatever, hindi sila maniniwala daw. So uh-huh. kailangan mo makapasok ng ospital kung talagang serious na para matest ka. Yun na nga, Jean, yung storya na ginawa ko for ABS-CBN News, yung um, si uh, Miss uh, Gatinaw, na na namatay because of COVID-19. Um yung first three times siyang tumawag, uh, frontliner po ito, nurse ito sa UK, three times silang tumawag. Yung first time um hindi sila pinuntahan, pangalawa ay um uh, may pumunta ng uh, ambulance pero hindi pa rin tinake. Um hindi pa rin siya kinuha at dinala ng ospital. So yung asawa na niya ang nagdesisyon na dalhin siya sa ospital at uh, dalhin siya sa ANE. Uh, yun, uh, nadala naman, na, na, uh, na ICU siya and all, pero kas- sa ang palad po, ay um, she passed away. So yan ang ating med- uh, story ng medical frontliner natin dito. Kaya nga, nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa testing. Ang target na ng, uh, ng, ng UK government ngayon is 100 testing a day. 100, Oo, oh, oh, 100,000 testing a day. Napakalaking bilang pero hindi pa rin nahihit yung target in the last five days. So, Vanji, in terms of testing, nagbago din ba ang um, patakaran kung sino yung mga pwedeng itest dyan sa Sweden? Kasi tumaas ang bilang ng uh, COVID-19 cases dyan sa Sweden. O, oh, nagtitest na sila ngayon dito. At saka yung mga halimbawa, yung mga nagkasakit na mga workers, bago sila makabalik sa trabaho, tinitest na muna sila. Kaya ano, kaya marami nang ano, marami nang natitest dito sa ngayon. Okay. Unlike before. Priority na. So in the UK also, priority po yung medical frontliners, yung mga nagtatrabaho sa mga home for the aged, over 65 years old, yung mga kailangang magtrabaho na may sintomas ng COVID-19 na not necessarily a uh, uh, medical health worker, uh, mga pamilya nila na nakakaranas ng sintomas at uh, mga pamilya din ng over 65 na nakakaranas ng sintomas. So at least um, narinig ng gobyerno sa UK yung kailang, na kailangan kailangan matest, malaman kung ikaw ba ay may COVID-19 kasi syempre katulad nung magkaroon ka lang ng mild symptoms pero hindi ka naman na-test, it's going to be a question in your head. Ano ba COVID ba ito? Ano pa yung mga pwedeng gawin? So hopefully, yan ang mga, yan din, Banji, baka magkaroon din dahil naman eh, napaka-advance din ng, ng uh, health healthcare system sa, sa Sweden. Baka yung mga nag, nagdanas o na, nagkaroon ng sintomas ng COVID-19 dyan ay pwede rin itest in the future, ano? O nagtitest na sila ngayon, nagpapadala na ng ano, ng, nagpapadala sila ng pangsawad sa bahay mo and then you have to send it kapag ka mayroon ka ng nararamdaman. Okay, saka ang mga nursing home na rin, nagpapatest na rin sila ng kanilang mga workers. Okay, batiin muna natin yung mga na- nanonood sa atin ng live. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Uh, DJ Brad ng London, thank you DJ. Yun ang kasama natin last week, si Dennis at minu- sinusubaybayan pa rin tayo this week. Thelma Manville ng uh, Kent. Thelma, Thelma Frontliner din po ito. Uh, Nasa isang uh, supermarket si Thelma. Yes, Thelma. Uh, Vilma, yung nagtanong kanina. Ang ating masugid na taga Subaybay from Kent also, Carmen Hickey. Magandang hapon po sa inyo. Si Hani Agustines. 
Albert Maliari. Hello po sa mga nanonood. Ihanda po ninyo yung mga tanong ninyo for our Immigration 101. Mamaya, lalo na po yung may kinalaman sa COVID-19. Um, ano po yung mga pagbabago. So, Vanjie, meron ka pa bang nais ibahagi sa amin? So, ang, ang gusto ko lang ibahagi eh, sa mga magkakaroon halimbawa ng sintomas o ng COVID. It's very important talaga ang malakas ang loob mo at have faith na talagang gagaling ka. Otherwise, mamamatay ka sa nervyos, mamamatay ka sa kawalang pag-asa. Kasi doon ako kumapit na no, kaya ko to. Ano, uh, hindi pwedeng hindi ako mabuhay. Ganun. Kinakailangan at nakatiwala lang sa Diyos. Yun ang pinaka-importante sa lahat. That's all. Magandang mensahe, Banji. Thank you so much. Sana ay... Uh... Wag mo munang i wag ka munang mag-overwork, wag ka munang masyadong magtrabaho kasi alam ko napakasipag mo at kahit may karamdaman ka ay sumasagot ka doon sa mga hinihinging tulong ng community sa iyo. So take care of yourself, Banji, lalong-lalo na sa anak mo na si RJ. We miss you. Sana ay maka makadalaw uli kami diyan sa Sweden. At um sana ay magsilbing inspirasyon sa iyo uh, sa mga kababayan natin yung kwento mo. And we will um we will uh follow up with you. No, magbensahe ka sa live namin sa susunod na uh, sa um, next live ng One You Connect, Haji. Thank okay. you, Haji. Pwede magpasalamat ako, Rosa, glit lang. Gusto kong pasalamatan yung mga nagpadala sa akin ng pagkain nung may sakit ako by taxi kasi hindi nila ako madalaw. So maraming maraming salamat sa mga nagpadala. Thank oh, you. <laughs> Oh, salamat po sa mga nagmamahal kay Vanjie. Alam mo, well love si Vanjie sa, sa Sweden. Marami kasi siyang natutulungan. Kaya kita mo na, nung may sakit ka talagang uh, the prayers for you, tsaka syempre yung pagkain. So Vanjie, maraming salamat. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Mag-ingat ka. Thank you, Vanjie. Thank you, thank you. So, yan po ang ating kumustahang COVID-19. Uh, ito po ang nagbahagi sa atin si Vanji Rebot Horkia. Nasa Stockholm, Sweden po siya. So, next uh, time po na live natin ay isang kababayang Pinoy pa rin ang uh, papakinggan natin ang storya nila sa uh, during the lockdown days. Ngayon, ito ang inaabangan ng marami nating mga kababayan. Dadako naman po tayo sa second part of our program. Ito po ang Immigration 101 at makakasama pa rin natin ang ating solicitor, in-house solicitor, Crystal Diaz at Immigration So there you go. Immigration 101 na po tayo. So yung mga may tanong po sa inyo, masasagot ka agad samantalahin po ninyo dahil ito ang aming community service ngayong panahon ng lockdown, ngayong panahon ng pandemya na makatulong tayo sa mga katanungan ng ating mga kababayan, lalo na po may kinalaman sa imigrasyon. So Jean, Rose. And that's okay. unang tanong. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, una naman na January habang naghihintay tayo ng mga katanungan. Uh -oh. So, uh, gusto ko lang talakayin po ang uh, issue na dahil deadly itong uh, coronavirus, marami po namamatay. Ngayon, ang, questions, ang question ng mga tao is uh, kung may namatay, ano pwede nilang gawin kung ang visa nila ay hindi pa indefinite o hindi pa sila Briton dito? Okay. Uh, so, very simple lang po ang sagot kasi uh, ito pala yung mga, mga questions. No? So, kahit naman po noong una, uh, may policy na ang uh, home office na kapag kayo ay asawa ng isang uh, indefinite leave to remain, ibig sabihin settle dito o kaya asawa kayo ng Briton, dinala kayo dito, ibig sabihin nun, pag ang inyong sponsor ay namatay, then pwede na po kayo mag-apply ng indefinite leave to remain. Okay. So, wag na po nyo... Sige, Rose. Ulitin natin yung tanong. Ito pong tanong na ito ay pinadala sa amin, sa One Connect, para talakayin uh, ni Jean. If a sponsor dies of COVID-19, um, can the dependents have, and the dependents have limited leave to remain as a spouse or partner 
-hmm. can he or she apply for ILR or indefinite leave to remain? So, Jean, yes. Yes. So, yan po. So, ulitin ko, uh, kung kayo po ay ganyan ang sitwasyon, dinala kayo dito ng asawa nyo, uh, at kayo ay nabigyan ng spouse, spouse or partner leave to remain, gayon din po ang inyong mga anak at uh, minor dependents, then pwede na po kayo mag-apply ng indefinite leave to remain. Okay? So, sigurado po yan, uh, hindi na nyo kailangang, uh, wala masyado marami requirements, no? Basta po, pagka may nangyari, pasok po agad. Okay? So, tingnan po natin yung susunod na question. Okay. Brad? Where's the next question? Wait, may tanong na ba? Can we go back to the first question? Sige. Um, can we go back to the first question uh, sa ating technical director? Jean, kasama, ah. kasi ang dito, leave, uh, leave to remain ng uh, partner, spouse, kasama ba yung mga anak dyan? Yes, yes. So, halimbawa, uh, indefinite yung mister o missis mo dito, kinuha ka bilang asawa at kinuha pati yung mga anak mo anak ninyo, so lahat kayo pwede mag-apply. Okay. Okay? So, uh, uh, ang, ang magiging uh, ayan na, so children and minor okay. dependents can also apply. Okay. Ang, ang magiging problema lang po ninyo, bawat isa ay magbabayad ng 2,389 pounds. Mm -hmm. Kasi wala na pong libre ngayon sa home office. But so, Ngayong pandemic, ito rin ba? Parang may nabasa ako, Jane. Can you please correct me? Na yung parang yung mga fees related to that application pag frontliner, medical frontliner ay mawawid. Can you please um let let us know kung tama ba yung impormasyon na yan? Okay, so so uh, actually, uh, Krista will tackle that uh, separately later. no Pero okay. sa, for indefinite, indefinite leave to remain, walang ina-announce ang gobyerno. Okay. So sa, sa ngayon, maghanda po ng, ng pera para just in case. Ang, ang sinasabi kasi yung nabanggit mo ay renewal. Renewal ng visa. Itong ah, renewal. sinasabi natin dito is pagiging indefinite leave to remain or settled sa UK. Okay. Alright? Okay. So, um, sige, next slide please. The next slide. Okay. Yan. So, uh, ang isa pong malaking problema ng ng ibang kababayan natin ay yung pagpasa nung tinatawag na life in the UK test. Okay? So, uh, sa ngayon po, pag namatay ang asawa nyo, hindi na ninyo kailangan kumuha ng test. Libre po, exempted kayo. Alright? At yung English test, na kaya-kaya nyo naman yan dahil mga Pinoy tayo, mahusay sa English, pero hindi na rin ninyo kailangan. Alright? So, wag na po nyong alalahanin kailangan nyo lang ay pambayad at mag-apply agad. So, nakalagay po dyan sa pang-apat. Huwag kayo mag-intay na matapos yung visa nyo ngayon. Dahil pag-apply nyo, very receptive ang home office. In fact, meron akong, may, may dalawa akong sitwasyon na uh, ang asawa nila ay actually Briton. Mm -mm. Pero, ang namatay, yung leave to remain lang. So, okay. Oh. Yung isa, actually, nag apply na ng uh, indefinite leave to remain. Nung sabihin ko sa home office, ibinalik agad nila yung pera ng tao. So yung binay nilang 2389, inirefund agad dahil siyempre kailangan ng tao yung uh, ng, ng asawa niya. Mm -mm. At yung dalawang anak, nabigyan din agad ng indefinite leave to remain. Kaya, mm -hmm. I'm, although siyempre masakit man sa kanila yun na uh, yung nga namatayan ng asawa, pero nung lumapit sa home office, very, very flexible ang home office ngayon. Kaya huwag po ninyong intayin, pasok po agad. Ang isa lang gusto ko idagdag dito, no, yung uh, pag may namatay, ay yung tinatawag na 60,000 compensation for NHS uh, frontliners. Okay, maliwanag po, sa, maliwanag po sa guidelines ng home office Unfortunately, ang pwede lang mag-claim nito ay yung nagtatrabaho sa National Health Service or public bodies. Mm -mm. Unfortunately, yung po mga nagtatrabaho sa private care homes ay hindi 
hindi allowed mag-claim nito. Ah, i- Kaya, malinaw na yan, Gene? Na, na, naka, naka-stipulated na ba yan? Oo, sa, mali- yes, oo Rose, unfortunately. Na natin yan? Unfortunately, malinaw na sa guidance <laughs> ng home office. Oh. At ang pinag-forget, kailangan National Health Service ang pinagtatrabahuhan ng namatay or public public funded ano ba uh, pag-aari ng local uh, council, council ang isang care home then publicly funded pero kung may ari ay private private care home Mm-mm. unfortunately wala po silang matatanggap oh unless my... <laughs> unless magkampanya tayo at uh, sabihin sa gobyerno na hindi naman maganda yan Mm-mm. Hindi nga maganda because alam naman po natin na malaking issue dito sa United Kingdom ang pagkamatay po ng mga medical frontliners ng uh, natin ano na nagtatrabaho sa National Health Service at sa mga private care homes. Hindi, ang bilang po ay mahigit 30 na. 30 uh, frontliners sa NHS at mga nagtatrabaho sa mga private care homes. So, um, salamat sa paglilinaw mo, Jean. Ibig sabihin pala, yung mga, na, na, mga kababayan na natin na nasa frontliner sila, pero hindi sila sa NHS, ay hindi makakatanggap ng 60,000 payout na ito. Yes. Ang patatanggap lang nila ay yung benepisyo ng kanilang kumpanya. Oo. At saka ang isa pang uh, fine point dyan is uh, yung minor print ay kapag napatunayan na sa loob ng dalawang linggo na karaan, bago ka namatay, ay may COVID patient kang inatindihan. So oh. napaka-specific niya. Oo. But hopefully, hopefully mapapatunayan niya naman ng mga tao. Okay. So meron pa pala, yung ano, meron pa palang detalye na nakatago, no? Tungkol mm-hmm. dyan sa 60,000 payout. Thank you, Jean, for clarifying. That's very helpful. Uh, kasi doon sa last um, live natin, I think nabanggit natin ito, and then we said na ito ang lilinawin dahil hindi pa nga malinaw sa, sa atin kung kasama ba dito yung mga frontliners na hindi naman sa NHS or doon sa public funded institutions nagtatrabaho. So that's a very, thank you for that clarification. Now, um, bati muna tayo sa mga nanonood sa atin sa live. Vincent Otieko, good afternoon Rose and Sir, Sir Jean and Attorney Crystal. Uh, Danny Muyot is watching also. Si Jay, ang ating pong associate producer. Uh, good afternoon, okay. Jay. Thank you sa mga pagmomonitor mo nitong mga uh, comments sa atin. Uh, sino pa yung nagbumati dyan? Mga kababayan nating nakatutok po, nasaan man kayo ngayon? Albert Malyari. Oy, frontliner din to si Albert. Hindi ba? Yes. O, okay. ang, o, ang asawa and his niya. wife. Both ah, his wife. Them. Yes, both, oh, no, of them. both of them. So yes. si si Albert, uh, taga country niyan, uh, kaibigan natin. Oh, and and I'm glad to hear na magaling na ang uh, ang misis mo na frontliner. Mm-hmm. Um, si Telma na bati na natin. Sino pa yung mga nandito at uh, nakiki hi and hello. Rose, si Rose ng uh, is it Finland? Tito Luis Ballesteros. Ah, ina-alert niya po si Mr. Ballesteros na interview natin ito. Ang asawa po niya ay frontliner. Sadly, ay namatay po dahil sa sa COVID-19. Si Melo Jean Ballesteros. Ayan po. Kaya gusto niya siguro na i-alert yung uncle niya na makapanood nitong, uh, nitong um, ma- ma- sinabi mo, Jean. Kasi, syempre, kung may payout na 60,000, kung magka-qualify ba dito, ilan doon sa medical frontliners na Pinoy ang magka-qualify dito. So there you go. Doon po tayo sa pangalawang bahagi ng ating um, um, Immigration 101. We're lucky to have with us this afternoon isa pong veteranang nurse naman. At marami siyang itatanong. Si Pearl Kakanindin will be joining us to ask a few questions later. Pearl, Veteranang nurse, nagsa-self-isolate ba? Anong-anong bago sa inyo? At saka, um, tell us, ano yung bagong venture mo ba nitong 2019? Uh, hello, una-una sa lahat. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, I want to greet everybody 
Good afternoon sa UK and good afternoon, I'm uh, sorry, good evening for those in the Philippines. Well, Rose, at the moment, uh, at the you know, I'm self-isolating in the sense that, you know, I haven't got any symptoms whatsoever, but then just to keep safe, I stay at home unless it's really very necessary for me to go out. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I try to keep abreast with the measures set forth by the government to help the NHS. And Pearl, tell us, um, ano yung business venture mo? Well, at the moment, as you know, I'm, I'm the director of uh, Skilled Healthcare International Limited. It's a company that uh, recruits nurses uh, from all over the world, mainly from the Philippines, but not limited to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And uh, we recruit nurses and allied health professionals to come to the UK for work. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the moment, that is uh, at a pause in view of this uh, COVID-19. But I'm sure it will be coming back very, very soon. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Pearl, ihanda mo yung two questions mo for Crystal later. Crystal, would you please give us um, a briefing, <laughs> online briefing, kung ano, yung mga, <laughs> kung ano yung mga bagong patakaran na inilabas ng home office na may kaugnayan po dito sa pandemic? So, essentially, because of the pandemic and the high numbers of uh, patients being treated for COVID-19. Overseas health uh, workers have been given a uh, concession to continue their work in the front line. So this is the latest UK immigration update. On the 29th of April, 2020, the Home Secretary Priti Patel has announced that free visa extensions will be automatically granted to more crucial overseas health and care workers. So it's for free. You don't have to pay the normal visa fee. Mm -mm. The list of crucial overseas health and care workers is now published on the Home Office website. Okay. So we have the frontliners, so frontline workers uh, whose visa due to expire before the 1st of October 2020, will receive an automatic one-year extension. It will apply to those working both in the NHS and independent sector and include the family members. So we do have a list of all those health workers. I have them in front of me, but I don't know. I think maybe we're pushed for time. Um, but one thing you also have to bear in mind that normally when you make an application, you pay for the immigration health surcharge, mm -hmm. which is normally £400 per year. But this time, all will be exempt for the IHS for the, dura for the duration of the exemption. So that's good news. So you don't have to pay the home office fee. You don't have to pay the IHS. Mm -hmm. Okay. In total, approximately 3,000 vital health and care workers and their families will benefit from that extension. Mm -hmm. So our Home Secretary Priti Patel said, we are incredibly grateful to all overseas health and care workers fighting this invisible enemy. Mm -hmm. So the extension comes into effect immediately and is for all visas expiring between 31st of March and 1st October 2020. Mm -hmm. Now, how to get the extension? Your employer will tell the UK VI if you're eligible for that extension. So you have to really get in touch with your employer. Once your employer tells you that you are eligible, you have to post your and your family's current biometric residence permit to UKVI. It's that card that looks like a driver's license. You have, you know, you have all the details of your visa there. So you post it. Your employer might offer to do this for you as well. Your UKVI will return your BRP to your employer after your visa has been extended. Now, there's a there is an address where you 
need to send the BRP uh, for the UK VI to extend it. It's at Sheffield office, and you can find this on the home office website. Now, if you've already applied for an extension, email the UK VI NHS team to withdraw your existing visa extension application and apply for a refund. Mm -hmm. But you cannot do this if you have already provided your biometrics, uh, fingerprints and photo as part of that application. Now, the Home Office has also confirmed family members and dependents of healthcare workers who sadly passed away as a result of contracting the virus will be offered immediate indefinite leave to remain. So basically, as Jean said, if you have uh, a family member who's work, whose uh, uh, partner is working in the front line who died of, um, uh, of the virus, you may get indefinite leave. And in fact, the Home Office has actually said that um, they, the family members will be offered immediate indefinite leave to remain. Now, the Home Office will work with the Department for Health and Social Care and NHS Trust to put this arrangement in place. Mm -hmm. So that's the current immigration update. Thank you, Crystal, for that uh, no, information. So there you go. Um, may tanong ka ba? Pearl, ano po yung gusto ninyong itanong? Yes, Rose. Uh, uh, for Attorney Diaz, um, I have got or we have gotten overseas nurses at the moment who are stuck uh, in the Philippines and have gotten, they have already gotten their entry visas, entry UK visas. I understand that the UK government is giving um extensions for the visas mm -hmm. but as these are entry visas they have not set foot uh, onto uk mm -hmm. how are they able to avail of this extension without having to you know go over the process again of reapplying for their visas because at the moment rose and jean and attorney Diaz, they are um you know stuck in the, in the philippines or any other parts of the world because i i recruit nurses not only from the philippines from but from other countries as well and they have gotten their visas at hand so what do they have to do in order for them to um uh, renew that uh, once their employer is in a position to get them over or the ban or of uh, deployment of healthcare workers in the Philippines is lifted? So that's a very good question, Pearl. So thank you for raising that. Because, uh, you know, as I understand, quite a few of your nurses already had their visa granted, but they are stuck in the Philippines. They cannot leave. Now, normally, um, the Home Office would grant them 30-day visa, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, basically, it's a vignette on their passport. So obviously, at this point, they can't use it because they are not allowed to leave uh, the country. But the Home Office did sorry, the Home Office did publish a guidance on the twenty eighth of April, twenty twenty, confirming that a person whose temporary third day vignette has expired or is about to expire can request a free replacement visa until the end of 2020 so basically they don't have to apply following the procedure again following the process of making the application sending documents and and what have you all they need to do is email the home office their specific email uh, it's cih at homeoffice.gov.uk and on the subject line, when you send an email, you, you write a, a, a heading as on the subject box. Basically, you have to type replacement 30-day visa. So you add that in the subject line. And then you have to include the Vignet holder's name, nationality, date of birth, and GWF reference number in the body of the email. So basically, if you do this, you will be contacted by the VAC 
uh, to once they're reopened to arrange for a replacement visa with the revised validity dates to be placed in their passport. So you don't have to do anything but email the home office. Okay. Thank you very much, Tony Diaz, for answering that. That, that was really very helpful. So, ang, ang sinagot mo ni uh, Crystal is yung question about doon sa mga nurses na nasa Pilipinas, correct? At uh, nabigyan na ng visa but because nga of the lockdown ay hindi pa maka, ba, makalipad ng UK uh, at nasa Pilipinas pa rin. So, this is the question number three na sinagot ni um, Crystal Diaz. Ngayon, uh, dako naman tayo doon sa second question mo, um, Pearl. Yes, my next question is, um, at, we have had nurses as well, overseas nurses, who have recently arrived in the UK. When I when I say recent, that is like two months ago or so. Mm -hmm. yeah, so um, in view of this lockdown and social distancing being implemented in the UK, it's not possible for their respective employers to conduct any sort of training or um you know anything that would support them in preparation for their hospital because um by rule they have gotten uh the, the UK, uh, home office have given them eight months to complete or uh pass their overseas uh, with their off exam um otherwise they risk repatriation but in view of the current climate this is not possible so uh given this how are what the stand of the home office i know that the the, the uh, nursing and midwifery council are giving these uh, overseas nurses the temporary registration in order for them to be able to work but in as far as their uh, ability to get their uh, license to practice as a registered nurse is concerned and the allowance given to them in order to uh come to be able to get a valid work permit, what is the stand of the home office given the circumstances? Again, Pearl, that's another very good question. Something I'm sure quite a few new nurses are worrying about. Um, they're worried about whether they can pass their uh, exams within the eight month uh, period. So we have something from the home office they have um, made an announcement on the 31st of March um, where they have stated that pre-registered overseas nurses who are currently required to sit their first skills test within three months and to pass the test within eight months will now have this deadline extended to the end of the year. So basically, anyone in this position, they can have their um the eight month period extended until the end of the year now we're now in may we only have seven months left uh before the end of the year but what they're saying is that they this will give overseas nurses more time to pass their exams while they spend their immediate term working on the front line there's no restrictions and hours to work that's what basically the home office stand on this so there's nothing more there's no more information given by the home office so i think we'll just have to wait and see what the home office will say on this uh, issue mm -mm. okay thank okay. you so much thank you for answering my questions Actually, okay can i can i just ask you i, I know we're running out of time now but uh pearl uh so you bring nurses here and uh, I understand you brought hundreds over, no? That's uh, true. You know that uh, there is a uh, discussion going on saying that uh, black and ethnic minority uh, staff are uh, the ones who are suffering more. Well, they're dying more than anybody else in the, uh, in the front lines. And uh, one of the potential reasons is our culture as Filipinos are we timid? We don't complain. We don't say no to managers. Maybe our English is not as good. So uh, when when we don't understand, we say yes, although we don't know what they, they told us. So 
is this an issue for the nurses that you're bringing in? What what sort of briefing do you give them to make them more assertive in the workplace and thereby uh, protect their life? Uh, part of the orientation we give our nurses when they arrive is what are, what most likely are the expectations that they will be having once they get to their workplace. I always tell them you can always be assertive without being aggressive. You stand on your feet, but then at the same time, you have to say it in a very respectful manner. And in answer to the question you just cited earlier on, I think uh, you know the Bain or the Black and Asian minority group, they are the, the, the group that are mostly struck by this COVID because um, you know, when you leave the country, your country of origin, and you come to the UK, you tend to be very uh, persevering and committed to the work that you go to because it entails the life of the family that you have left behind. So then, when you come to work, some, some, what, based on my experience, the, the, the nurses are afraid to complain or because they might be reprimanded, they might be suspended or you know they, they are afraid to displease their superiors and probably this is the reason why you know these things happen nowadays on top of that i've heard some you know, um, reports of you know, this usual issue about uh ppes the lack of ppes and i think those are the very common factors that has that have led to the increase in the deaths of our uh, fellow filipinos mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. You know, Spurl has a very can give us a very good insight because she has worked for the NHS, Tama Pearl, no? Yes, I've worked for the NHS uh, as a permanent staff uh, until 2009 and then I worked as a freelance nurse. Um, but then also for the NHS, both in the uh, NHS and the private hospitals until I did put up, you know, this uh, the skilled healthcare. Okay. Uh, whereby I'm mainly focused on the recruitment of nurses. So my, my experience in both fields, whether a private employer or an NHS employer, is very vast because of my, well, I've been in the UK 18 years, 18 years of experience in the health sector. Okay. So, ang maganda yung insight mo, uh, Pearl, on this because ito yung pinakamainit na issue na kinakaharap ng mga kababayan natin, the medical frontliners. And a lot of our, you know, kababayan na we're trying to, to interview, to this day, marami din ang ayaw magsalita to talk about their lack of PPE. Marami din ayaw magsalita uh, doon sa um, bibigyan sila ng assignment sa COVID ward kahit... Um, kahit uh, meron silang takot. That's why um, itong isang Filipino organization, nurses organization, ay tumutulong sa mga kababayan natin na nandyan sa sitwasyon na, ngayon, na, na yan. And I think the the topic now uh, related to immigration, malaking malaking aspeto no, yung hindi pagsasalita ng mga kababayan natin, being timid sa first few years ng uh, pagtatrabaho nila sa, sa UK, may kinalaman talaga siya doon siguro sa visa na hawak nila kasi sino ba naman ang gustong bumalik sa Pilipinas kung hindi ka or sino ba naman ang gustong mag-challenge sa superior superior mo at this uh, you know at some point na hindi ka pa sigurado kung maririnyo ang visa mo or magtatagal ka sa NHS o sa isang private private care home hindi ba That's right because most of the nurses that come over majority of them are breadwinners so they, they they look at their employment here as you know a real diamond something a life-changing experience for them so why would someone compromise that opportunity unnecessarily but uh, i would i would say that speaking up for yourself is not something unnecessary in fact it is necessary if it if, if it does compromise your safety as a healthcare worker but you have to do it in a very nice way that's true Okay. Yes. So I think we have to continue to also remind our kababayan, lalo na yung mga bagong dating. Kasi yung mga veteran nurse na matatagal na sa servisyo, ang, sa mga interview at least na um, the interview that I had with them, it not so much na yung pag-aalala nila on uh, their status kasi they're British citizens now. Right. Pero 
ang pinag ito naman yung genuine uh, genuine um care at saka yung dedication ng mga kababayan natin sa frontline na um kahit siguro masama yung pakiramdam ng ilan kahit natatakot because nakikita nila na kokonte ang staff na nagtatrabaho dun sa particular ward or even in covid ward talagang papasok sila because ang even yung mga manager manager level na gusto nila na, na hands on pa rin ang kanilang pag-aalaga sa kanilang mga particular division or ward Actually, uh, sorry uh, sorry gusto ko lang i ano no kasi may isang nagsabi dito si Aling Carmen uh, tanong daw kay Pearl kung may insurance ba yung mga nurses bago magpunta dito no ang ang question ko lang is uh, well hopefully now na nakita nila na may ganito palang peligro sa buhay nila. Uh, ang question is, paano natin sila uh, mapaghahanda para nakaredy kung ano man na mangyari? Kasi, okay, kung sa NHS sila pumunta, okay lang. Pero kung sa private sector sila mapunta, ano yung dapat nilang ihanda bago palang pumunta dito o pagdating dito? Para yung mga mahal nila sa buhay, ay eh, meron namang mas ipapaano maaasahan kung may mangyari sa kanila. Pearl. Ay, um, bago uh, bago magpunta um, ang mga nurses dito sa UK, lalo na uh, I'm talking about nurses that are coming from the Philippines for now, right? Mm-hmm. The Philippine government has got this um, uh, document that we ask the employers to sign. We call it a letter of undertaking. And in this letter of undertaking, it's um, it's clearly stipulated that if a nurse um, dies um, during the course of their uh, employment, whilst they are on a work permit with a certain employer, mm-hmm. the, the hospital or the employer is mandated to um, shoulder the expenses of the, the, for the repatriation of the body of that worker. So, um, yan ay isa sa mga nakasaad sa mga recruitment documents na um, nire-require ng embassy natin o ng PILI ng COEA. Hello? Yes, thank you Pearl. Thank you for that information. Meron kang ditong ano, meron kang uh, masugid na taga-subaybay. Uh, may mensahe kay Pearl. Marami daw salamat sa sa ginagawa mo for everything that you do for us. Oh, oh ayan. Our, oh, oh. Salamat, Pearl. Ayan, yung mga nanonood na mga uh, kababayan po natin, nandyan po ang mga comment ninyo. We'll try to read them. Si Joe Ojo, Ojos, watching from Pasita, San, San Pedro, Laguna. Magandang, magandang gabi po dyan sa inyo. Kung meron po kayong karagdagang tanong para po sa ating mga kasama ngayong hapon um, Solicitor Crystal Diaz uh, Immigration Consultant Jean Alcantara uh, Veteran Nurse may mga insights siya both in private and in um, private uh, sector and in the NHS at ngayon ay nasa business side na rin ng recruitment so maraming kaalaman ang ating pong guest ngayon na si Pearl Kakanindin Meron po kayong maidadagdag na tanong. Maybe we can entertain a few questions before we uh, have to say goodbye. Kasi parang naririnig ko din, mayroong kumakain. <laughs> no, uh, no so, uh, gusto ko lang idagdag as well. Doon sa tanong ni Jean uh, regarding the uh, what, what are the necessary uh, steps that they, they can do in order to prepare their family uh, whilst they are in the UK. Well, personally, please... Uh, this is not any marketing or whatever but personally i think it would help na meron kayong some sort of insurance um you, when I, before i was never very particular with insurance but during this pandemic i could see the importance of this one just in case just in case something unexpected takes place so um I, that's one of my suggestions, Jean. And uh, of course, you always set aside something for the rainy days. It's very important, uh, especially sa mga 
young the young nurses i know when they i know because when i came here i was uh, in my late 20s and you know it's it's like freedom and you can do everything that you want you can spend left right and center of course you can still do that but always save something for yourself and for your family mm -mm. Uh, isang, yes isang, isang bagay like that, that ko, no? so uh, we're talking about the uk you know uk government pero siempre philippine government uh, alam ko may mga offers din sila ng assistance uh, hindi lang natin uh, iisa isa pa so siguro uh, rose that could be a subject for uh, for one of our next uh, uh, shows definitely ano, oh, diba? ano yung mga benefits na makukuha ng uh, mga nurses or frontline workers na namatay dito okay uh, ano may creation ba may whatever money mm -hmm. money compensation o ano man um, I can add to that because uh, some time ago, I, I, I think twice or three times I did this, whereby kung merong mga uh, parating na nurses, we have what we call a post-deployment seminar that we do coordinate with the embassy. And uh, during that time, uh, members of our Philippine embassy has met the group of nurses that we have deployed to the UK. Uh, there was a representative from PAGIB, from SSS, and from OWA, and all the new nurses have been oriented on the benefits and how they can continue their contributions and how what, what services, what benefits can they avail uh, in the UK as well as their beneficiaries in the Philippines. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Oh, oh, nga, Pearl, no? Kasi you are also directly in touch with um, some officers of the Philippine Embassy because of um, that um, orientation na ginagawa ninyo for the new nurses in the UK, no? That's right, yes. Yeah. Okay. So kung meron pa po kayong mga katanungan, you don't necessarily have to ask them now. You can message us. Pwede nyo po, po kaming i-inbox para malaman po namin kung ano po yung mga topic na gusto po ninyong i-clarify. So ito po ang ating free consultation online. Maswerto tayo dahil kasama po natin ang dalawang mapagkakatiwala ang uh, immigration experts natin, Solicitor Crystal Diaz at si Jean Alcantara. So kung mayroon po kayong mga tanong, don't uh, hesitate to message us. We will try our very best to answer them. At kung, may, kung maaari po at makakatulong ang aming programa, ay ililink up namin po kayo sa mga otoridad para masagot ang tanong ninyo. Yung input ni Pearl, kakanin din, ay napaka-importante, lalo na po yung mga tanong niya doon sa mga kababayan natin na naipit ng lockdown sa Pilipinas, na bigyan na po ng visa, pero syempre, because of this pandemic, because of the lockdown, ay hindi makarating dito sa United Kingdom to work. Nasagot naman niya ni, uh, ni Crystal. At saka yung clarification ni Jean on who is gonna receive the payout from the government. 60,000 pounds payout. Nasagot na po natin uh, yung clarification na ito ay para sa mga NHS workers at saka yung mga public funded medical uh, institutions. Tama, Jean? Uh, yeah. In the, uh, publicly funded Care homes. Care homes. Okay. So, nandyan po ang, um, yan po ang ating mga kumustahan sa inyo. Nakasama rin po natin si uh, Vanji Rebot Horkia sa Sweden. And what I learned from her naman, o oh, ito na-related din sa you, Pearl, yung tungkol sa kanyang will. Naghanda, dahil nakaramdam siya ng COVID symptoms, naghanda siya ng will. I think importante din yan para sa mga kababayan natin. Di ba, Jean and Crystal? Yes, absolutely. That's oh, what, especially so if you have a, I think most especially so if you have gotten a mortgage in the UK, I think doing your last will is very, very paramount uh, at, at, during these very uncertain times. Okay. So next time I suggest, Rose, let's do that. Let's cover wheels and things like that. 
Sige. Okay, mag-comment po kayo sa, sa amin, mag-inbox po kayo sa amin at uh, malalaman na para malaman po namin kung ano yung mga specific na tanong po na gusto ninyong sagutin. Kasi yung naiwan namin na discussion last week was about the payout and Jean clarified it. At ito naman pong tanong na ito ay very urgent para sa uh, kasama nating si Pearl kasi may mga Filipinos na naipit sa sa Pin Pinas, hindi sila nakalipad dito papunta ng UK because of the lockdown. Ano yung maaari nilang gawin at marami pa po tayong natackle ngayong hapon. So let us know. Um, again, we are doing our Facebook Live para po makapagserbisyo kami sa inyo mga kababayan habang nasa lockdown po tayo. Sana po yung impormasyon na nakuha ninyo sa amin ngayong hapon, lalong lalo na sa ating mga sa ating solicitor at immigration consultant ay sana nakatulong po sa inyo at yung input din ni Pearl bilang nurse at bilang um, recru uh, recruiter. No? Pearl? Yes. Uh, with your permission, uh, Jean and uh, Rose, because I think this is very important, can if can I please reiterate yung sinabi ni Jean in regards to the £60,000 payout in the event that an NFS worker dies. Do you do you mind? I hope you don't mind if I state that in um, English because I have some nurses okay. at Filipinos. And mm -hmm. I ha in fact, I had one colleague who asked me this the other day. So uh, she's not a Filipino, so maybe she might be watching. Um, I just want to reiterate that you can only, according to our uh, solicitor, uh, Jean Alcantara, you can only uh, avail of the sixty thousand pound payout in the event of a death of a worker, an NHS worker, or a public funded care home. So, in other words, if you work in a care home and it's not public funded, it's privately owned, and something unfortunate or you, uh, I mean, there is a death of a worker, then you are not entitled to this uh, sixty thousand uh, pound payout. Okay. Jean, isn't it? And also, Pearl, the devil is in the detail. Kasi nabanggit ni Jean dito, kailangan din mapatunayan na may exposure sa COVID patient, yung frontliner. So, you know, ito pa yung mga kailangan uh, gawin ng, ng pamilya, siguro, o, o abogado nila para mapatunayan na karapat dapat silang makakuha ng 60,000 pounds payout. Tama ba, Jean? Yes, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So to, to rephrase that, if, uh, and say, I work in an NHS hospital, and I, you know, unfortunately, someone, this worker dies, but then there was no proof that this worker was exposed to a COVID patient, does that mean then that she won't be entitled, he or she won't be entitled to the 60 pound payout, Jean? Well, I think the, the point is that uh, if you're working in a hospital, uh, you, it could, you could be a doctor, a nurse, a porter, a cleaner. If you're exposed, then it's it's really your management, your manager who should be trying to prove this. Uh, so it'd be hard for the families to prove that, diba? Mm -hmm. So the responsibility is on management and maybe the trade unions like the RRCN could also RCN. get involved because yes. uh, these people need every support that they can get from everybody. Para, yes. Dahil inannounce na nga nila magbabayad, bakit pahihirapan pa yung mga tao? Eh, In-exclude in na nga yung mga private, eh, itong sa NSS, pahihirapan pa rin ba? Mm, that's true. Okay. Well, Maraming salamat sa input ng lahat. Maraming salamat sa advice ng ating solicitors, ng ating immigration consultant, at sa um, kay Pearl for joining us this afternoon. Maybe your um your last words bago po tayo tu tuluyang magpaalam sa ating mga nanonood sa Facebook. Uh, Crystal? So, yung mga pong uh, uh, pinag-usapan natin ngayon is to do with the one-year extension it is quite general, although there is a list nga kung sino ang entitled sa one-year extension. If you're not sure, always ask your employer and then they will check for you and let you know if you are eligible. If you have any specific questions, please just contact One New Connect, send them a private message, and I will try and answer your questions. Okay. Uh <clears throat> Well, actually, there's a final, final question from someone called Ruby Rose, uh, GNE. Uh, 
Tourist, oh nga eh, tourist visa siya, lost her job two months ago, she cannot afford to go home, cannot hmm. afford accommodation or isolation, for isolation. Well, my, my, my quick answer to this is if, you're, if you want to go home, then the home office will pay for your uh, for your flight. You just need to contact them. But we, we're out of time, so maybe we could do this uh, offline and oh, yeah. uh, we can give you advice. Maybe the next segment, ne maybe the next show. There's so many things we can cover. But then it comes over in an hour or 45 yeah. minutes. <laughs> Ruby Rose, please inbox us. At sasagutin po yan ni Jean Alcantara and we will try our best to help. Uh, at uh, ilink po kayo sa mga authorities or uh, people who can help you um, regarding your question. Pearl, maraming salamat sa iyo. Marami ding salamat and sa inyo, Jean, Crystal, and uh, Rose, and hopefully more power to when you connect. And uh, I want to um, address my nurses, keep safe, stay safe, and uh, patiin ko lang yung mga anak ko, ma uh, Gerald, Vaughn, and Ivan, hello sa Philippines. Okay. Maraming salamat dun po sa hindi pa nagla-like at hindi pa nagpa-follow sa atin sa Facebook and YouTube. Please click and follow us and subscribe sa aming pong YouTube channel. Dahil ngayong panahon po ng lockdown, ito po ang aming uh, public at community service sa inyo. Makapagbigay po ng payo tungkol po sa mga regulasyon na bago na inilabas ng home office at Kumustahang lockdown din kung kayo ay nag-aalala dahil kayo ay mayroong sintomas at um, na naayos niyong ibahagi ang inyong kwento sa amin. Nandito po kami sa inyo sa loob ng isang oras. Maraming salamat po on behalf of One You Connect team mula po dito sa UK, sa iba-ibang bahagi ng Europa at ang aming team din sa Pilipinas. Magandang hapon at uh, sumasaluto po kami sa ating mga frontliners dito sa UK, sa Pilipinas at sa buong mundo. Salamat po. Selamat malam. Wan saan kaman dalhin ang kapalaran? Iisang bayan lang sa puso mo'y naman inagmulan at babalikan. Konting tiis na lang at hangga.